Good afternoon from beautiful Cape Town, South Africa. My name is Luan and I will be presenting today's webinar. So a little bit about me. I've been a teacher for over 15 years and during that time I have taught students from all over the world. It's been such a privilege and an exciting adventure and I wish the same for you. And for this reason, I'm very excited to be a part of your journey, presenting the, today's webinar and just sharing some useful information with you to help you through your course, but also into your years of teaching and yeah, just hoping that you have as wonderful as experience an experience as I have. So it would be amazing to see where you are today. Please say hello to us in the chat um, on the side of your screen. Tell us where you are today. I've told you where I am, Cape Town, South Africa. Please let us know where you're sitting today. It's always a pleasure to see um, who's joined and where from. So yes, just while you put your names in, while you let us know where you're from, just a little bit about today's webinar, a reminder that it is on a very specific topic and that we will have a Q&A session just a little bit later on at the end of the presentation and I will answer questions about today's uh, topic specifically. Any other academic questions that you might have or questions about other assignments, of course, you can send those as always to tutor support and if we'll help you with whatever you need help with. But today, just a reminder that the topic is very specific and the questions answered during Q&A will be on today's topic only. Also, just a tip, as I go through the presentation, you might be thinking, of questions and that's great but I do invite you later on when I open up Q&A that you type those questions in only then because if you type them, them in a little bit earlier I might miss them and I might not be able to find them when Q&A comes up um, and I'd love to answer as many questions as I possibly can. So let's just see who we've got with us today. Oh goodness me the names have come in. Um, We've got, yeah, we've got people joining from Canada. Hello to you. Durban, South Africa, London, UK. Amazing. Moldova, hello. We have from Western Cape, South Africa. Hello. My neck of the woods. We have visitors from Mexico, USA, Johannesburg, South Africa, Argentina, Australia. Goodness me, the list goes on and on. France. Oh, UK again, Scotland, welcome. This is such a, an exciting part, I think, of any TEFL teacher's journey is that you just get to meet and say hello to people from around the world, right from your students uh, to the colleagues and to the peers that you meet along the way. We still have names coming in from Dubai. Um, I think we've got someone, Liverpool, UK. Yeah, Bahrain. Wow, welcome to you all. And I really hope that today's webinar helps you. Um, right, so I think it's time to get started. And then yes, as you join, just put your name and where you're from. It's just lovely to see all these names and um, places and locations coming in. So today's topic, as mentioned, very specific. And I know that lots of you do this course. You're excited when you get started. And then sometimes you feel a little overwhelmed when the assignments start to crop up, right? I think this is the nature of any course or course experience is that you, you start just ready to go. And then as the tests and as the assignments come up, well, then you start feeling a little tentative. But that's what we're here for, to help you specifically with level five assignment C. So if you're doing the level five course, then assignment C is the final um, assignment that you'll be submitting. And always remember that assignments take a little bit of time to mark and also that this particular assignment just a reminder some admin on the side this particular assignment must be submitted at least two weeks before your course ends and that is just to accommodate and make time for marking the possibility of having to resubmit that sort of thing so make sure 
that you, when you work on this assignment, you've got plenty of time before you hand it in. If you do find yourself getting really close to your deadline, you might have to get in touch with student services and look at getting an extension. But otherwise, two weeks before your course ends. Right, so let's have a look specifically what we're going to look at today in terms of this assignment. Just on a personal note, for me, this is one of my favorite assignments, not only to mark, but just the fact that it gives students that bit of freedom um, to come up with their own activities and to add their own flavor and their own flair to a set of activities, activities. And I think that that's what makes this assignment such an interesting one to mark because every single assignment is different one to the next. Right, so in today's webinar, we're going to be looking at different components of the assignment from evaluating um, a textbook or a course book. You've got to write an essay. So think of it like a review, right? But a review is after you've read the book, right? Um, an evaluation is where we give you a sample, a bit out of that book, and you've just got to look at the sample, look at the scope and that sort of thing, write an essay. So that's one part of the assignment. Then the very next part is where you need to select an authentic material. Um, and then you've got to create three activities to follow on um, after your students have either read the material or completed a comprehension task on the material. So submit a piece of material and design three adjacent tasks. The very next thing that we'll be looking at is a second essay. And this is really a reflection um, you know, on the usefulness of authentic materials in the classroom and why you chose that particular material to submit and also why you chose those three activities to design. Then we'll be looking at the bibliography. It is so important in this assignment because this assignment really gets you using resources from other places, so online and books and magazines and you know all sorts of things, blogs, that sort of thing. So here, the bibliography is quite important, and for that reason, it's on our list today. Right, so just to recap, we'll be looking at the evaluation, we'll be looking at selecting an authentic material and creating the three activities to complement that piece of material, and then also, a second essay where you've got to write on the usefulness of authentic materials in the classroom, and finally, a bibliography. So that's today. That's exactly what we'll be discussing today. Right, so the very first thing that we're going to look at is, of course, the evaluation of a course book. We say textbook, but also you can, it's fine. If you hear me saying course book, it's one and the same thing. So what we do is we give you a unit or a chapter out of a particular course book and we also give you the scope and the index page and all these are provided to you on the assignment instructions page we give you a list uh, a checklist later on that you can use when writing your evaluation that's found in unit 10 but the actual course book material this is found on the assignment page and you'll have access to all of this they're in pdf format and you'll get to look at them again and again before you actually write your assessment or your evaluation you need to write an essay to evaluate the suitability for a class of advanced students now remember advanced upper end of the scale these are fluent English communicators. They know big words and they know great grammar structures. So it needs to be a piece that's quite challenging. Oh, sorry, the book is quite challenging. It's got um, lots and lots of high level vocabulary, intricate reading pieces, and these are some of the things you can comment on. So as a teacher, you might have to select a course book. So this is really, really good practice because it tells you what to look out for in a course book, what's useful, what's not useful. And you really get to think about, would I use this in the classroom? Because that's exactly what the last paragraph is, your opinion. So you've got to use the checklist for the evaluation. We give you this. And the questions listed are guidelines for the evaluation. There's no perfect course book. So the teacher really needs to decide what would work best. Um, for the course aims, the group of students, and so on. So remember, this has got to be written in 
in an essay format with paragraphs. And yes, we know that you cannot comment on all the points in the checklist. That's all right. As long as you've commented on all the useful bits and pieces that you came across when evaluating the units that we've provided on the assignment page. Right, so if you have a look, the we spoke to earlier about the checklist that you would use to evaluate the course book or the textbook sample. This is the actual checklist, right? So you've got to look at the unit we provide, you've got to look at the sample, and you've got to ask yourself, is the material clearly structured and ordered in a logical sequence? Are the materials graded appropriately? Is there lots of practice and recycling and revision of vocabulary and grammatical structures? Is there a teacher's book with answers and, and extra resources? If you can't find this in the materials, can you have a quick check online to see if this book actually comes with a teacher's book? Does this book provide exercises that students can do alone or in groups or in pairs? And is the material clearly presented? The list goes on. Is there a balance of all four skills? So you've got to think about the listening, reading, writing, speaking, and also language areas like vocabulary, grammar, pronunciation practice. Is there an interesting range of different activities? Listening, reading texts, are they interesting? Um, do they look and sound authentic even if they're not? Um, is the material culturally appropriate? Will the students be able to afford this book? Are there grammar pages, vocabulary lists? So basically, if we give you the unit out of the book, you'll be able to comment on quite a few of these. And I'll tell you why. Because when you open up course book, every unit is different, yes, in terms of its content, but its format is the same. If there is a vocabulary list in unit one, there'll be a vocabulary list in unit two. If there are interesting reading pieces in unit one, there'll be interesting reading pieces in unit two. So lots of students say, well, how can we evaluate the book using one unit? But the unit is quite a standard sample. It contains a lot of information. And like I said, most of the other units mirror this unit. Just the content is different. But basically what you're looking at is a standard unit that you can very safely and comprehensively assess and evaluate. So that there is the evaluation of the course book or the textbook. And we've set a word limit for this essay. Please write it in essay format. We don't want bullet points. Make sure that you can comment on at least a few of the points raised in the checklist that we've just gone through. And like I said, the checklist is in unit 10 while the samples for the course book are on the assignment page. All right, so that's the first part of the assignment, just to get those creative juices flowing, just to get that critical eye of yours going. And now we move on to the second part. So the second section of the assignment, I think for me, this is probably the most interesting one, and that is the selection of an authentic text or an authentic piece of listening material. Now, the, if you think about authentic text, um, it's something that is or has not been created for English learners. You will not find an authentic text in a course book. You will not find an authentic text on an English learning site, but we'll have a look at that a little bit later on. For now, let's look at who who are we creating this material? Or who are we creating this part of the lesson for? Right, so it's a class of advanced students. There, now remember on the CEFR scale, that would be your C1. C2 is more proficiency, but these are strong advanced students. They are, it's a mixed nationality class. It's a general class. So not a specific like business English, not exam preparation, a general English class. And like I said, mixed nationality. So that means mixed cultures, mixed religions, mixed background, but all adults and all at advanced level. If you look, if you break that down a little bit further, we've got nine women, six men aged 20 to 40 years. And a little bit about their background. 
they're living and studying in an English speaking country. So your text that you choose, and I keep saying text, but remember you can also submit a little video clip or a piece of a podcast, right? The material must be appropriate for all students in the group. So stay away from topics where there are racial themes or um, violent themes or political themes. Stay away from those and go for more neutral topics. When we're in the classroom, it's our duty to really select material that is neutral and where English learning is the core. Whatever your students decide to go and chat about over coffee outside or a drink outside of the classroom, that's on them. But inside the classroom, keep your topics neutral. So think about things like food, um, festivals, you know, marketplaces around the world, um, health, wellness, um, creative stuff. So, so the bits and pieces from books that they've read. So I think what you've got to think about here is it cannot be offensive got to be general, neutral, interesting for a bunch of adults, and just of a level where they are challenged. Nothing too academic, not too many jargon terms. Think about something a bit more general, something that you and I will pick up and read. That's what we've got to think about with this class, right? So now that you know a little bit more about the students, um, let's look at them in a little more detail because you know what? You're going to be teaching students, people one day, and they'll all have different situations and different backgrounds and different stuff happening at home, right? So our group here, four students, they've got university places, they want to improve their fluency in English. Two are married to people from the host country where they're living. One is at home with a young child and the other works in a restaurant. Four are work colleagues sent by their company to work in this country for a year and so on and so on. So as you can see, oh, you know, quite a vast bunch, lots of different motivations, lot, lots of different stories here. So you've really got to think about who you're creating this lesson for in terms of the material you choose, um, you know, to make it neutral, to make it user-friendly for your lessons, right? So when it comes to choosing a relevant text, remember I said to you earlier, we're gonna talk a little bit uh, more about what an authentic text is or what an authentic video is. So when we think about authentic text, these are materials that mother tongue speakers would use in their everyday real world context. So authentic materials, whether it be a piece of text or whether it be a video, are not created for teaching the language or for teaching English. Um, these really give students the opportunity to immerse themselves into the language. So think about your news articles. Think about your blogs. Think about your stories online. Think about magazine articles. Think about things like restaurant reviews, uh, movie reviews, uh, theater reviews. I love reviews. Um, think about things like, um, you know, informative stuff, like if they're looking for another course to study and they go onto a little college website, you know, and they want to enroll for a course. Think about travel information. So it's quite vast. There's a lot to choose from. Just steer away from content created for English lessons and also steer away from overly academic pieces and definitely steer away from any topics that might offend your students. Right, so we're going to dive a little bit deeper because I think, you know, it's it's something a little bit difficult for people to get their heads around when we say it's not created for an English classroom. You're bringing it into an English classroom, yes, but the material was not created for English learning purposes. So now let's look at the difference between authentic and EFL teaching materials. So that's language class materials. So you've got non-authentic material. So this has been, this is anything that has been designed specifically for the process of teaching English. So worksheets, textbooks, beautiful stories, from textbooks, um, language learning sites, interactive apps, these have specifically 
been designed for English learning purposes. So materials found on or adjacent to these not suitable as authentic material. So remember, authentic material, stuff you and I will pick up just to read for entertainment, for fun, to inform ourselves of a particular topic, whereas um, non-authentic material, that would be stuff that's been created for English learning, and that's not what we want for this assignment. I hope that's clear. All right, so once you have chosen your piece of text or your piece of material, you will need to select 12 vocabulary items that you feel would be necessary to pre-teach to your students before they read the text, right? So remember, if you think back to our other assignments, assignment A, for example, that pre-teaching of vocabulary would happen before your students read the text or listen to the video. So you've got to, so remember, you've got to choose words that you feel they wouldn't understand or words that would be particularly useful to learn before they'd read these, the text or listen to the video. So think about your C1, C2 level words, collocations, phrases. And after you have pre-taught the 12 vocabulary items after your students have completed a comprehension task on your listening or on your text. Now we want you to create follow-on activities. Now what are follow-on activities? Your follow-on activities are tasks that further exploit that video or that piece of authentic text that you've brought in, you know, to use it in more ways, to recycle it and use it for a different activity. So the first one we want you to do is a dictionary skills task. Then we want you to do an online activity or an, should I say an activity that includes online resources. And the third is a follow on activity. So your activities really should be challenging and engaging because remember you are creating these for advanced adults. They have in their skill set a wide range of vocabulary and grammar already that they're willing to exercise and practice in these tasks. So give them that challenge and please remember no AI to create your activities, no AI to create your tasks, your text. Please keep your assignment AI free as far as you can. Right, so now we're going to look a little bit more into the three follow-up activities that we want you to plan. Now, something that does create um, a little bit of, you know, students having to resubmit is the teacher instruction section. So if you look at the activities um, template, you'll see that under each activity, there's a little space for teacher's instructions. Now, you are creating these three follow on activities. Yes, primarily for yourself to use with your class. Remember to further recycle that piece of authentic text or authentic video or listening that you're going to use. But you're also creating these activities in case another teacher wants to use them. Now, remember, teachers need instructions too, right? So when you're designing activities, remember, you've got to leave the teacher a set of instructions, what the teacher has to do to set up this task, to, um, to check what students are doing, to facilitate, and then to wrap up. So the set of teacher instructions are not what the students have to do, are not what the teacher is going to be saying, no. The teacher instructions is a set of instructions from you as a teacher to another teacher in case they'd like to do it. For example, divide your class into an even number of small groups of, of four students. Give half the class handout A while the other class gets handout B. Make sure that everyone has access to the internet. Make sure that everyone has a dictionary. So those are the instructions you're giving to another teacher. That's important. And also, the instructions really need to be detailed enough. So say, for example, you call in sick and the work gets given to another teacher, your instructions for that teacher should be crystal clear, simple 
and clear so that if they need to fill in for you or if they want to do the activity with another class, the setup of that task is crystal clear. Right, I hope I'm being crystal clear. All right, so when we think about the dictionary skills task, so here the focus is the dictionary. Make sure that your task includes the use of the dictionary. Um, select vocabulary, um, you know, maybe from your authentic text, or it can be your, the pre-teach words. It can be a different set of words from your authentic text or your authentic video um, that they've got to use a dictionary to further explore these words. Provide clear instructions for your for your students, are they looking for meaning, form, pronunciation, synonyms, antonyms, word families, co further collocations, the register of the word? Make sure that the instructions are very clear, that it's not just look up the words using a dictionary. That's not enough. It doesn't help us visualize the task. So make sure that the instructions are crystal clear. And also, if you plan to use a worksheet for the dictionary task, please include it. Don't just allude to one. Don't just say, I would. We need to see if you've planned a worksheet, if you've planned flashcards, if you've planned some kind of material that you want to use for the dictionary skills task, make sure to include it. In the assignment files, you'll see a materials file, and that's exactly where you can put it. But make it very clear that that is your dictionary skills task worksheet. And then, the very next task after the dictionary task is your online task. So what we mean here is a task that really gets your students working online. They need that kind of opportunity because we use the internet every single day. So this is an activity that further exploits your authentic text or your authentic video, but it gets them researching. So make sure that it is not just another reading or listening task where they need to focus on another article or another video. That would be very much similar to what they've done with your um, authentic material prior to these three activities. So make sure that it's something that gets them to research the topic maybe in your authentic text or video. Um, provide a set of websites or suggest a few websites for them to start with. And also remember to include at least three of these websites on the actual worksheet. Because remember, if a student misses class and gets the worksheet from a peer or someone else in the class, everything needs to be on there. The instructions for students and also the websites that they've got to use. Remember that Google is a search engine, not a website, not sufficient in terms of what we're looking for. So if your, act, if your activity is based on travel and they've got to find different interesting hotels from around the world, maybe give them a few travel websites. If your topic is about health and wellness, give them a few websites where they can find information about health and wellness. So make sure that your websites are fine-tuned and useful for your students and that they can find the information that they're looking for. And also remember, when you give websites, you've got to reference them in the bibliography. Right, so we're going to be continuing with the online task. Um, and like I said, if, for example, your, to your topic is travel, ask students to plan a trip. Research other types of holidays or destinations. The task really should be quite challenging and not just yes or no, not just another set of comprehension style questions. Give them different points to research, um, you know, a little bit of critical thinking. Maybe they've got to look at two options and make a decision, um, you know, and write a few sentences per answer, maybe. So the task really should get them, like you and I, research things. You know, if you're researching a new place to go and visit, you write down a few things. If you're researching a new dish to cook, you write down a few ingredients. You write down pros and cons of a university you'd like to visit. So give them that same experience. Have them research various points. Have them write down a few, answer, a few sentences for answer. And also to collate that information from several sources, not just one link to one article where they've actually just got to read. Have them really explore and navigate websites in order to find the information they need for your task. And remember, 
that the online task is the only one where a worksheet is mandatory, where you've got to hand in a worksheet. But remember, if you do plan a worksheet for your former dictionary task or for the upcoming follow-on task, yes, then you've also got to submit that. And that brings us to the next activity, which is the follow-on task. Now here, we give you a lot of freedom because we really want to see that creative side, right? So think about activities that you could do after your students have done a comprehension. Um, and try to keep these communicative. Remember I said to you earlier, your advanced students have got in their skill set a, a really wide range of vocabulary and grammar and all these lovely expressions. And communicative, communicative activities really give them the opportunity to practice these structures and to use them freely. So think about role plays, debates, discussions, um, you know, simulation speaking tasks, maybe. Um, you know, I, I steer away from things that are too contrived, like presentations. Presentations are useful, yes, if they're doing a public speaking class or if they're doing a business um, English class, absolutely. But in a general English class, let them communicate naturally. And those examples I gave you earlier, role play, debate, um, you know, discussions. And remember, we cannot just say to students, right, discuss something. You've got to give them discussion questions. You cannot just say role play. You've got to give them the roles and the scenario. And all these in, all these little bits and pieces maybe need to be included in your materials section um, or just below the activity on the activities template, right? So make sure that the follow-on task, the, th the third activity, really gives them an opportunity to verbally respond to the authentic material with their own ideas, their experiences, um, their opinions, because it really gives them that platform and they really enjoy that platform. You don't need to get very much involved. You need just to monitor and allow your students to speak. Get involved if they need you. Right. So now we get on to the second essay. So the second essay is really, for me, it's it's a reflective essay because you're thinking about, you know, the first paragraph is all about why do we use authentic materials in the classroom? So um, if you think about the different headings in the essay, it really does take you through the assignment you've just done. Um, and that's, that's why I said it's quite a reflective process. So after you've created your tasks, you need to write this essay in which you really motivate your choice of text or video if you chose a video, your choice of vocabulary. We don't want you to list your vocabulary here. We want you just to explain why you chose those words and also your choice of tasks. There's a word count, um, a total word count for all four paragraphs, not per paragraph, all four paragraphs of 700 words, useful sentences, no bullet points, please write it in paragraph form and also proofread your essay once you've done it. Because remember, it's an English speaking, or our course is an English teaching course. So our assignments are marked for um, application and understanding of TEFL concepts, but also for accuracy. So we really do need for you to proofread your work to make sure that everything is spot on. Right, so that's the essay. It's all about authentic materials in the classroom. It's all about why did I choose that particular authentic text or video? Why did I choose those vocabulary items? Why did I choose those three tasks? That Why did I choose that particular dictionary activity? Why did I choose that online activity? Why did I choose the follow on? And then there's a fourth paragraph too. So remember, enjoy the process because it really does take you through the journey of your assignment. So that's your second essay. And then we have the bibliography. This is very important. You cannot leave this out. So the bibliography, any text that you've used, that's your authentic material too. Um, websites that you included, uh, maybe for the online activity or an online dictionary for the dictionary activity. 
course units that you used from our course, um, you know, books from outside that helped you put this assignment together, reference everything. If you look at the assignment notes on the assignment page, you will actually see that there is a file called referencing. And here in this file, we show you um, with examples exactly how we want the different resources to be referenced from websites to course books to pictures. We show you exactly how to reference everything. So use this, but if you get stuck, of course, notify us and we'll send you some information. So when it comes to assignment C, I think what you've got to do is approach the assignment, the assignment as an outlet for some creativity, the opportunity to really think about what you would like to present in the classroom. Because yes, even though we've put the structures down, as would any TEFL course, we've given you the freedom of deciding what kind of topic do I want to choose for my authentic text? What kind of topic do I want to choose if I decide to go for a video? Please remember that on the assignment instructions page, we've also given you word limit for the text if you choose a text or how many minutes the video should be more or less if you opt for a video instead or a podcast um, clip instead. If you find something that is too long, of course, you can edit that, you can shorten it. If it's a video and it's too long, send us the, the clip and just say to us, my students will be listening from um, the beginning till about five minutes in or two minutes in to about seven minutes in. That's absolutely fine. But please remember, the minute you start changing the vocabulary and the grammar in your text or in the script of your video, that material is no longer authentic. If you are simplifying vocabulary because you feel it would be better for your class, that material is unfortunately no longer authentic. Authentic material, your students should be able to find it online or in a magazine just the way you've given it to them, except we do allow you to shorten it to meet um, assignment requirements. And also you're completely allowed to remove any offensive language or any language that might um, upset your students. Um, also, we allow you to correct things like spelling mistakes or to correct the placement of a comma here and there, some grammar mistakes. Of course, you can correct that too because we do not want our students to feel, well, I get that wrong or I got that wrong because that's how it appeared in the text. You can correct mistakes. But say, for example, you feel that you'd like to change the word in the text, maybe example, livid, and you'd like to change it to furious because furious is simple. That's not allowed because that text is then unfortunately not authentic. All right. So the idea is just to find something as is that's just right for your class. But yes, again, a reminder, you can absolutely shorten it. We do not permit blending of text. You can't take a text from one source and maybe another text from another source and put them together. This is not allowed. It's got to be one cohesive text or one video from one source. I hope that helps. All right. So that's actually brought us to the end of me presenting to you. And right now, I know you've got questions, right? Because I can already see that there are a couple in, um, in the chat function right there. So please, right now, I'm opening up Q&A. If you've got any questions, put them in there right now, and I'll be able to attend to ma as many of them as I possibly can. So remember that today's questions are about level five, assignment C, and those are the questions I will be answering. If you have questions about the other assignments, I will answer them. If it's sort of a general question that applies to all assignments, of course, no problem. But if it is a question that pertains particularly to another assignment, I am going to ask you to send your um, questions to tutor support, right? Um, 
yeah, so please put your questions in right now. I'll scroll back a little bit to see if I've missed any. I'm not going to go too far back. So if you put your question right at the beginning of the presentation, please type it again so that I can answer as many of these as possible. Right, so let's have a look here. And a big welcome to all of you who arrived a little bit after we said hello to everybody. It's lovely to have you here. Okay. All right. So slightly general question, but hey, I'm going to help you out here today. So Mariam wants to know, I've just started this course. A big welcome to you, Mariam. How am I able to find assignment details? So Mariam, the assignments are released at different times in the course. Um, once you finish level five, and the end of unit test, you'll have access to the first assignment. Then when you finish uh, unit seven, you'll have access to the second assignment. And when you finish unit 10, you'll have access to the third assignment. We do not release assignments all at one because we the assignments are very much a consolidation of the preceding units. So they get released one at a time. All right, so watch the space. Five units in, you should be looking at your first assignment. And all the best with that. Don't feel stuck. Send us a ticket at Tutor Support. Right. So we've got another question. Hello, Stephanie. Stephanie wants to know where can I find the video of the other assignments? Oh, yes, Stephanie. Great question because they're all available on our YouTube channel. Please have a look. We've got um, videos on assignment A and B, a couple of those. And if you are doing, if any of you are doing the level three course, there are also. Um, a couple of useful webinars to help you with the assignments or the coursework as well. All right, let's see. So I think it's Cash. Cash wants to know. Oh, Larry. Hi, Larry. <laughs> um, with in regards to the bibliography, can we use any form of reference style such as actually, uh, Larry? Coincidentally, it's the Harvard style that we use too. But as I mentioned earlier, please have a look at um, on the assignment page. You'll find a file called referencing, and we actually give you the format there of how to reference. We do understand that you might not be able to find all the information. That's okay. Please don't stress about it. As long as if it's a website, for example, you can give us the name of the article or the page, the name of the site or the address, the link to the site, and then also. Um, what is important is when did you access it? What was the last date that you accessed it? Um, as much information as possible. But Larry, coincidentally, Harvard style too at the TIFL Academy. All right. Um, Um, yeah, so please, as I answer the questions, please um, punch in your questions so that I can answer as many of these as possible. Uh, Kirsty wants to know, is the word count for both essays the same? No, Kirsty, they differ slightly. The first one, the evaluation of the course book, um, is 300 to 500 words, whereas, yeah, about 300 words, whereas the, the second essay on... Authentic materials, that is a word limit of, um, I would say, between five and 700 words. Yep. So it'll be in the assignment instructions. We'll give you the word limits. They're there loud and clear. But if you do miss them or you do forget, no problem. Either rewatch this webinar or you can send us a message to tutor support and we will send you all that information. All right. Right, let's see. Okay, do advanced level students understand? Okay, so I'm, I'm thinking it's aspects like onomatopoeia. I found one in my text and would like to incorporate it into my dictionary skills task. I'm not going to pre approve activities during the webinar, but I will say that at advanced levels, they've got quite a wide skill set. So you can absolutely play around with. Um, different aspects of language, I would say, yeah, why not give them a challenge? All right, so I have another question here. Um, do we get samples 
on how the assignments need to be laid out. Now, when it comes to assignments like assignment B, yes, because that is a very prescribed format that we're looking for. But assignment C, it would be very hard to give you samples because we're asking you to create the activities. So, you know, we will give you as much guidance as we can, but when it comes to um, the activities, yeah, it's very difficult to give you samples. For assignment B, there is a sample. For assignment A, lots of guidance too. But assignment A is also very much your interpretation, your creation of activities. So yeah, I think you can see in some cases it is quite difficult to give samples. But a B, definitely a set of samples. C, no. All right, then the next question we have is, are articles on the newspaper website authentic? Absolutely they are. You're on the right track here. So at the minute you open up a newspaper uh, site. Remember, you're reading it because you want to inform yourself. It's the, the, the content there has not been created by um, course writers writing for English language purposes. Not at all. A newspaper article is 100% authentic. The only time I would say it's not authentic is if you find it on one of these um sites that are like English language news articles, you know, then it's been simplified. And um, yeah, then I would say they've been modified and simplified. But if you find it on a good old, you know, standard news site, you're on the right track. And think about it this way, your advanced adults, they feel so chuffed. If you've given them a news article, and you've allowed them to do a dictionary activity, an online activity, um, a speaking activity, all around a news act, a, a news article. They feel so accomplished, and the reason is because they've worked with an article that you and I would would have read, or that any English first language speaker would be reading. So it really gives them a sense of achievement and accomplishment. So yeah, definitely a news article is a great idea. Okay, question about the dictionary activity from Roni B. Um, thank you for the great video, no problem. <laughs> Can you please elaborate a little on the dictionary? I I'm gonna say the dictionary activity. Do they just need to search for certain words or do I give them a specific task? Um, yeah, so remember, just searching for the word, not enough. They've got to really explore what the dictionary has to offer. Right, so when you open a dictionary, you will and you look for a particular word. You'll open up and you'll look. You'll find the word. You'll see that there is um, the meaning is there, the little definition. You'll see that in brackets it'll tell you whether this word is a noun, a verb, an adjective. So you'll see parts of speech. Then you'll also see some funny little script in in funny lines, and that's the phonetic um, transcription of the word. You know, the little apostrophe in the phonetic transcription tells you where the word stress is. It'll also tell you whether this is a formal or informal word. It'll tell you whether this is US English or UK English or where the, what the etymology of that word is and what the word collocates with. Oh, there's so much there for them to synonyms, antonyms that I could go on. I get excited by dictionaries. There's so much for them to explore in a dictionary. So when they look up one word, they've got all that at their disposal. And I say, Roni, challenge them with that. Don't just have them look up a word. It's not enough. They've got to know how to use. Remember the topic or the activity is dictionary skills. And the skill, I'm sorry, goes beyond just opening it up and finding the word. What else can they look for? Do they need to change the form of the word so that it fits into a particular sentence? Do they need to find synonyms for that word and replace the original word with another one? The possibilities are endless. So I would say play around with the dictionary, see what's there, keep the activity linked to your authentic material, please. And also teachers, the link has got to be clear. When we look at your dictionary task and we look at your authentic text that you've submitted, it's got to be clear what the link is, because if it's not clear for us, 
then it's not clear for your students. They need to see that, that connection between the authentic material and the dictionary activity, the online activity, and the follow-on activity. Does that help, Roni? All right. Okay, let's see. Okay, so this is a good question. Well, they're all good questions, but how do we calculate the time for the second activity? All right, so the time factor is up to you. It can either form part of a lesson, your activity. It can be the whole lesson. That is up to you. You need to look at what you've planned. You need to maybe try the activity and see how long it takes you um, and then allocate your time. So make sure that your students have enough time. A lot of people tend to send in activities like a dictionary race. Now, I mean, it's fun, yes, but does it really give them the time to fine tune those skills, to fine tune those dictionary skills? I always say, give your students the time to do things. So I would say, look at, look at what you've planned, try a couple of the activities yourself, look at more or less at course books and how long they'd get for an activity like this in a course book, how much time would they be given? And then allocate your time according to that. All right. Any other questions, type them in. And those of you saying thank you, you're most welcome. All right. Ah, and then I have a question here, slightly unrelated, but it's not a problem at all. Um, Someone asked, is this information necessary for a level three student? Okay, so level three does not have the exact assignments that level five has, but Erin, I will tell you that even level three has got something similar in the assignments, especially assignment B, but you will not be busy with either of those right now. But I would say, to really help you with your assignments, I would go to um, one of the webinars that, yeah, that are specifically created for level three. All right. Any other questions? Now is the time and you're very welcome. All right, just going through some of the older posts to see if I've missed anything. I really don't wanna miss anything. You're welcome. <laughs> um, those of you who are asking about the word limit requirements for the essays, they are very much specified in the assignment instructions. Um, and I also, um, it's been at least three hours since I marked my last assignment. I would say that they should be on the template itself also but if not then they are very much in um, the assignment instructions in case you've forgotten is there a transcript for this video um well if and i'm going to put on my technical head here i'm thinking that if you do access these videos through our youtube channel then YouTube has got the function whereby you can click open up the information below the video and there should be an option to click on transcript and you should be able to get hold of the transcript of this video. That's me thinking I'm very technical, so I'm thinking, yes, you could most likely do that. Uh, Suzanne, if you can't find the transcript for some reason, then of course you can watch and rewatch again um, all the bits that you find a little bit confusing or send us a ticket at you to support and we can help you and uh, clarify any bits that were unclear. All right, any other questions? I need more questions, people. I like answering questions. I'm here right now, so make use of me. <laughs> All right, let's see. I'm very much afraid of saying that's it, Q&A done, because often when I say that, at least three or four questions come in. So please, if you can think of any other questions, then send them in. 
if you are um, approaching assignment C, I think the best thing to do also, we've given you some notes on how to approach the assignment. Read those too. You know, they sort of supplement the instructions and just go into a little bit more detail on um, the assignment instructions or, or, or the points of the, you know, the different parts of the assignment that you've got to plan. So please remember that in addition to um, in addition to the instructions, there are also, I think, two files, one called Advice on Approaching This Assignment. Read that too. It is very much useful. All right. Um, question here. When pre-teaching vocabulary, do we have to say, no, no, no. So remember, Anne-Marie, we don't need you to pre-teach any vocabulary. You just need to select the words that you think would be useful to pre-teach from your text or from your video. Um, because remember, the activities you're designing are for after they've learned the pre-teach words. So we don't need to see any of that. It's implied. You just need to tell us, you know, these are the words. I guess you're telling us these are the words I have pre-taught. So yeah, um, we do not need to see how you do it. We don't need a vocabulary table, nothing like that. You simply need to highlight them in your text or you can list them below the transcript or the, the uh, text typed out. That's all we need. Right, let's see, now the questions come in. Do all the activities have to be done during the lesson? Uh, for example, right, can the online activity be set as homework? No. It cannot be homework because the whole, the premise of that task, of this assignment really, is incorporating authentic materials, um, online materials or online resources into the classroom. How do we incorporate these things into our lesson? So not for homework, Bianca, it's definitely got to be done in class right? Um, I mean, yes, you can ask students to bring something in from home, but the actual activities, your dictionary task, your online activity, your follow-on activity in the classroom during class time. All right. Um, Roni, where can I find the classroom information you showed earlier, number of students? Right. So, if you don't, if you can't find that on the actual assignment page, open up the, the I said earlier that there are um, a set of notes and I think it's called advice on approaching this assignment. You might find some more information there. If you still can't find it there, send me a ticket and I will absolutely have a look if I can find it for you myself. But it should be on the assignment page or in the notes um, that say advice on approaching this assignment. Have a look there. All right. Irina wants to know how long is how long is the class supposed to be? Um, Irina, I don't think are you asking about the, the three activities? Now remember these are three activities that can either be done on the same day or a day later or even you know a week later, as long as they're done in class. So again, up to you how long each activity is. Now I would say a normal class maybe a skills class, on average is about an hour. So I would say as long as your in-class activities do not exceed that, it should be okay. All right, um, do, we do we have, okay, where to check the level of plagiarism or what's the minimum percentage on the assignment? Right, so when it comes to plagiarism, the assignments are pretty much your creation, particularly this one. Of course, the authentic material would be something that you maybe get from online, but all the other activities, they need to be yours. If you find activities online, don't use them, do your own. If you find activities that look like they could have been submitted for an assignment, don't do them. We do not remember when it comes to plagiarism on the course, even if just a part of your assignment is similar to another student's work or a former student's work or assignments that we know to be online, yeah, it doesn't look good. So I would say as far as you can, write your own work, create your own tasks, put together your own materials. It's worth it at the end of the day. Can we use dictionary games for adults? Why not? So I am, you know, I, I play games sometimes in the classroom and sometimes I don't. 
I sort of read the room. But if it's a game that tests speed and accuracy and how much information you can find, maybe in a specific amount of time or, you know, winning team gets no homework for the day, why not? I would say that adults can be pretty playful as long as your games have a strong learning quality, that there's an aim to learn something by the end of the process, I would say, why not? Absolutely, you can. All right, so I see that that was the last question that came in. So that is the last question I'm going to answer because it has gone six o'clock and it's time to say goodbye to you. But remember, please, that we do have these webinars every single week, different presenter, giving you a different spin on things, but telling you lots and lots of useful stuff. So please join, same time, same place next week. But something important that you've got to do for me is fill in the survey. We need your feedback. Even if you filled it in before, that's okay. I think you can actually access it again. Fill it in so that we can see how you're feeling or what you're thinking or, or what sort of um, topics you'd like to know about. So please fill that in. We'd love to get your feedback, right? So again, thank you very much for joining today. Remember that this uh, particular webinar will be available on um, our YouTube pa page shortly. Um, I think it's usually just a couple of days by Monday, Tuesday uh, latest. It should be available. But in the interim, if you are actually looking for our other webinars, go and have a look on our YouTube page. They're all there. I regularly visit because I find so much useful information from the other tutors, my colleagues. All right. So thank you for joining. Had a great time with you. Join us next week again. And remember, if your question did not get answered, or if you think of something you'd like to ask, send us a message onto tutor support and we'll happily help you out as best we can. All right. So I'll be putting the survey on the screen also. But for now, bye bye. And I will see you next time.